the sculptural decoration of the Parthenon explained. The Parthenon is famous, not only for its architecture, attic order, and innovative manufacturing techniques, mathematical proportions and hidden distortions in the architectural members, etc., but also for its rich sculptural decoration, constructed under the supervision of the leading sculptor of ancient Greece, Phidias. The entire temple was in direct interdependence and harmony so that the entire project remained unique throughout the centuries. The reliefs of the metopes in the Doric frieze, the Ionic frieze, the pedimental sculptures of the pediments, and the gold and ivory statue of Athena Parthenos mark a special period of ancient Greek art and sculptural development. In the creation of the pentelic marble reliefs decorated with colors, Phidias also worked with his students, Alchemenes the Athenian and Agoracritos the Parios, from the Greek island Paros, while the gold and ivory statue of Athena was an exclusive creation of the great sculptor. From inscriptions found on the Acropolis after excavations at various times, we know the exact date on which the various parts of the sculptural decoration were placed on the temple, and so we learn about the evolution of the sculpture art style, in the period of construction and completion of the temple. Specifically, the metopes were the first decorations that were completed in 442 BC. These are characterized by forms of severity that were elements of the early classical period. The forms on the Ionic frieze that was completed in 437 BC are milder and with lighter clothing. At the pediments, constructed during the last period of the project, the human body can be clearly distinguished through the rich clothing the figures are dressed in. The Pedimental Statues The two pediments of the Parthenon were adored with pedimental statues. They were carved between 438 to 432 BC and presented mythological scenes important to the city. Each pediment has a length of 28.8 meters and a height of 3.4 meters at the center. They consisted of 50 full relief figures, larger than life size in the center, that reduced to the edges due to their triangular shape. These compositions, of high design value and inspiration, were exclusive works of Phidias and had possibly first been made as small models. The carving of the sculptures by Alchemenes and Agoracritos reveals a unique artistic skill. The statues were originally augmented with colorful paint and metal accessories. Some of them were detached by Lord Elgin during the Turkish occupation of Athens in the years 1801 to 1805 AD and in our days are exposed in the British Museum. The rest either remained in place or fell, and were discovered during the excavations at the Acropolis, from 1833 AD and after. The East Pediment of Parthenon, the Birth of Athena The East Pediment depicted the birth of Athena. According to Greek mythology, Zeus gave birth to Athena after a terrible headache. To alleviate the pain he ordered Hephaestus to strike him with his axe, and when he did so, Zeus' head split open and the goddess Athena was born in full armor. The central figure is majestic and enthroned Zeus, Athena stands beside him in full armor. Between them, goddess Nike flies with a laurel wreath in hand, destined for newborn Athena. In front of Zeus's throne, a stunned Hephaestus stands still holding the axe that relieved Zeus' headache. Iris rushes to announce the great and happy event. Also present are figures of the gods Poseidon and Hera both seated on thrones, the goddesses Demeter and Persephone resting on a panther skin, Theseus or Dionysus, the three fates, the goddess Aphrodite sitting on goddess Dion's knees, the sun god Helios, and the moon goddess Selene as well as other female figures. At the edges of the pediment, the chariot of Helios begins his journey in the east while the chariot of Selene sets to the west. The horse heads of Selene's corner, mirroring those of Helios on the opposite side. By contrast, the horses of Helios are depicted full of energy as they begin their daily journey across the sky, while Selene's horses look exhausted as they are at the end of their daily run and sink back into Okeanos. This signifies that the whole scene must be at dawn. 
From a reference of the Greek traveler and geographer Pausanias, we know about the compositional themes of the pediments. Jacques Carey, a French painter, captured the edges of the east pediment in his 1674 painting. The restoration of the pediment has been based on a relief, which is preserved in Madrid. The West Pediment of Parthenon the conflict for the patronage of Athens. This pediment depicted the conflict between Athena and Poseidon for the patronage of Athens. Athena was the winner, so the city was named Athens. Goddess Athena is represented in the center of the pediment. Behind her comes a chariot with two horses and goddess Nike as the charioteer. The next central form on the pediment is the god Poseidon. Behind him is a chariot with two horses and the goddess Amphitrite as the charioteer. The presence of an olive tree or a Zeus thunderbolt is suggested in the space between the two central forms. The messenger god Hermes, son of Zeus and Maia, is depicted near Athena's chariot. Correspondingly, messenger goddess Iris is depicted near Poseidon's chariot. At the corners, female and male forms are represented, they are kneeling or lying down to watch the chariot race. Researchers agree that all the figures are inspired by the mythology of the city. Several opinions have been expressed regarding the arrangement of the figures. Today the arrangement of the West Pediment, as shown in the Acropolis Museum is the one that has prevailed. Most figures of the pediment were almost intact until 1674 AD when they were drawn by Jacques Carey, but after the bombing of the Parthenon by Francesco Morosini in 1687 AD, most statues were destroyed. Francesco Morosini was a Venetian noble, admiral, commander-in-chief, and doge of Venice from 1619 to 1694. In 1685 he was appointed commander of the Venetian fleet and in 1687 during the Marine War, he besieged the Acropolis which was under Ottoman Turkish rule. On the night of 26 September in 1687, one of Morosini's artillery shells detonated a cache of gunpowder stored inside the Parthenon, which had already been converted into a mosque. The resulting explosion destroyed three of the four walls of the temple, six columns on the south, eight ones on the north, and the remains of the small area in front of the entrance, called pranos, collapsed except one column. After this catastrophic event, the temple became roofless and partly demolished. Later, in the years 1801 to 1805 AD, Lord Elgin removed the majority of the surviving pedimental sculptures, only leaving the statues of Kirkops, Pendrosos, and Caleroy. The Metopes of Parthenon The Metopes are rectangular slabs alternating with triglyphs over the architrave. The Parthenon Metopes bore carved scenes, more richly decorated than in any other ancient Greek temple. The reasons for such rich decoration were financial since, during that period, Athens was at its highest point of growth and dominated the ancient world. The number of the metopes is 92 with a height of 1.2 meters. Their background was covered with red color. Their themes were inspired by mythical battles. On the east side, the metopes depicted the battle of the Olympian gods against the giants, Kigantomachy. On the west side, the metopes depicted the struggle of the Athenians against the Amazons, Amazonomachy. The theme of the south side was the struggle of the people of Thessaly, Lapiths, against the Centaurus, Centauromachy. Finally, the fall of Troy was depicted on the north side. The Parthenon's metopes were carved between 445 and 440 BC and were the first architectural members bearing sculpted decoration to be installed on the building. As they were carved by various craftsmen, they differ slightly in their style. The East Metopes. The Kigantomachy, the battle of the Olympian gods against the giants. On the east side, 
There were fourteen metopes representing the battle of the gods against the giants, who according to the mythology were children of Gaia and Uranus, the personifications of earth and sky in Greek mythology, respectively. According to the myths, the giants were mortal and could be killed if they were struck simultaneously by a mortal and a god. They were terrifying, supernatural beings. They had human form, but they were dreadful in appearance, huge in height, and powerful. They had thick hair and long beards. They held long and shiny spears in their hairy hands. Their strength was unimaginable. They could easily lift huge stones and throw them. They were born mainly in the wild lands of Halkidiki. The mythical battle of the East Metopes was called the Kigantomachy, and it was one of the favorite subjects of Athenian artists who chose to depict it in all forms of art. It was the battle in which the goddess of their city, Athena, played the leading role and that is why the battle was weaved onto the peplos that was offered to her during the Panathenaic festival. Moreover, the outcome of the battle symbolized the triumph of light, stability, and order against the darkness, instability, and chaos and evoked the Athenians' fights against foreign invaders. Although all East Metopes are saved, they are in very poor condition. The West Metopes of Parthenon. The Amazonomachy, the battle between prehistoric Athenians and Amazons. There were also 14 metopes on the west side representing the Amazonomachy, the battle between the Amazons and the first Athenians. According to the myth, this mythical battle took place at Areopagus and ended with the victory of the Athenians. The regular alternating subjects on these metopes are either a mounted Amazon that defeats her enemy, who has fallen on the ground, or two unmounted fighting opponents. All men are depicted naked whereas women are dressed. Due to the poor condition of the preserved metopes, it is extremely difficult to recognize the figures. The damage was mainly caused by intentional hammering, perhaps during the conversion of the Parthenon into a Christian church. Today four of the West metopes are exhibited in the Acropolis Museum. They were removed from the monument in 2012, for their protection against air pollution and bad weather conditions. The remaining nine, are still in their original position on the Parthenon as they cannot be taken off the monument for technical reasons. The Acropolis Museum displays their plaster copies, with the exception of Metope 6, a cast of which has not been made as its surface retains no trace of its relief decoration. The poor condition of these metopes led some archaeologists to believe that the figures represented are Persians. They based this opinion on the figure's oriental apparel. The majority of researchers reject this since the Amazons were from Asia. The South Metopes of Parthenon, the Centaurumachy, the battle against the Centaurus. On the south side there were 32 metopes, of which 23 depict the Centaurumachy, and the remainder various other themes. The centaurs were mythological creatures, half men and half horses. They were hideous, evil monsters, that according to the best known myth, fought a great battle against the Lapiths, the people of Thessaly. The Lapiths defeated the Centaurus and expelled them from their territory. The South Metopes were not damaged as severely as those on the other sides of the temple. The bombardment of the monument by Francesco Morosini in 1687, broke 14 of them into fragments. At the beginning of the 19th century, 15 of the 18 best-preserved Metopes were forcibly detached by Thomas Bruce, Lord of Elgin, when Greece was under Ottoman occupation and ended up in the British Museum in London. Today 15 metopes are located in the British Museum, one in the Louvre, a centaur head in Würzburg, the head of a Lapith and a centaur in Copenhagen, another is in situ in its original position on the Parthenon, and one has been rebuilt according to Carey's plans and is kept in the Acropolis Museum. The North Metopes of Parthenon, Scenes from the Trojan War 
The 32 northern metopes represented scenes from the Trojan War. The ancient Greeks considered an actual event that took place around the 12th or 13th century BC and aimed to conquer Troy. Due to Troy's important strategic position in the Dardanelles, it was controlling the trade between east and west. This war has been surrounded over the centuries by various myths. Homer described it as a mythological event in his poems, The Iliad and the Odyssey. According to Homer, Agamemnon, king of Mycenae and the brother of Helen's husband Menelaus, led an expedition of Greek troops to Troy and besieged the city for ten years because of Paris' insult. The metopes of the north side were destroyed when the Christians converted the temple into a church and during the bombardment of the Parthenon by Francesco Morosini in 1687, which damaged mainly the long sides of the temple. The metope 32, representing Athena and Hera, is the best-preserved metope on the northwest side. Athena and Hera supported the Greeks in the Trojan War. Apparently, its preservation was because some Christians gave that particular metop a Christian interpretation. From excavations years later in the area around the Parthenon, some metopes of the north side were found, preserved in a very poor condition. The Ionic Frieze of Parthenon The architectural feature that runs around the upper part of the outer wall of the cella was the Ionic Frieze. It consisted of 115 blocks 1.2 meters high, made all of pentelic marble. The total length of the frieze was 160 meters. It was richly decorated with marble reliefs. In Greek, the Ionic Frieze is called Zephoros, which means life-bearing. The great Panathenaic procession to the Acropolis was represented on the frieze. Panathenia was the biggest festival of ancient Athens in honor of the goddess Athena. The celebration took place every four years, probably in mid-August, and lasted for twelve days. In addition to ceremonies and sacrifices, the celebration included horse races, athletic and musical competitions. The procession followed the Panathenaic Way, the broadest and most important street in ancient Athens. The Parthenon frieze and especially its theme, was a huge innovation since for the first time, it represented events from the real life of the ancient Athenians, and did not deal with mythological events. The procession included about 378 human and divine figures, as well as more than 200 animals, mostly horses. The thematic display of the frieze began at the southwestern corner and finished in the middle of the eastern side. West Frieze The West Frieze sat upon the columns of the temple's West Prostasis. The Prostasis were a group of columns in the narrow sides of an ancient Greek temple. In the Parthenon, this colonnade aimed to support the weight of the roof. The West Frieze consisted of 16 marble blocks, depicting young men with their horses preparing for the horseman procession and the sporting events. The theme of the show is the gathering and launch of the cavalry at Karamikus, depicting 30 figures, 15 figures horseback, 3 officiants, 1 moderator, 3 servants, 9 horsemen with their horses, and 23 horses. The procession begins on the southwest side. Part of it goes south and another to the north to meet on the east side, where the delivery of the goddess Peplos is depicted. Under the 2004 restoration project, works were carried out for the effective protection of the West Frieze. The original blocks were removed and stored at the Acropolis Museum and the West Frieze was replaced with casts. North Frieze The North Frieze consists of 47 marble blocks with a total length of 58.7 meters. It shows 136 figures, 93 horses, 4 oxen, and 4 rams. Some of the blocks have been lost, some of them are known only from Jacques Carey's drawings, while others are completely unknown. Among other things, the northern frieze depicts the racing of the Apovites. This was a Panathenaic race, with four-horse chariots, charioteers, and hoplite competing. On the road, 
the hoplite ran while ascending and descending from the chariot. Twelve chariots are shown in total, depicted at the start, with the ascending and descending apovites. From the left are pictured, Athenian citizens with animals, oxen or ram, preparing for the sacrifice, Scaphophoroi carrying offerings to the goddess, Hydriophoroi holding Hydriae and Thalophoroi in the background of the frieze. A group of musicians follow playing flute and guitar, and then a group of older men talking to each other. Immediately afterward there is a representation of the chariot's race, while at the end of the north side there is a procession of equestrian hoplites, horsemen. Today the surviving blocks are divided between the Acropolis Museum and the British Museum in London, where they ended up after they were removed by Thomas Bruce Lord of Elgin, in 1801-1805 AD, when Greece was still under Ottoman occupation. In order to facilitate their transportation, Elgin's workmen, cut off with saws or crowbars only the faces of the blocks that bore the relief decoration. The Acropolis Museum exhibition includes the plaster casts of the faces of these blocks. On these casts, some of the original fragments that fell off the monument, and thus escaped the looting, have been adjusted. South Frieze The South Frieze consists of 47 marble blocks with a total length of 58.7 meters. This side of the frieze depicts horsemen, chariots with riders, and the procession of sacrifice. There are 60 figures of horsemen divided into 10 groups based on their clothing. They probably represent the 10 Athenian tribes, according to the Athenian state organization. The chariots, charioteers, and hoplite represent the Apovites race. The last blocks contain elders and animals for the sacrifice with their guides. When Francesco Morosini's force shelled the Parthenon in 1687 AD, many of them were damaged. Twelve blocks are lost. We know the themes of seven blocks thanks to Jacques Carey's sketches, but we have no information on the other five. The surviving blocks are exhibited in the British and the Acropolis Museums. East Frieze the East Frieze is sat upon the columns of the temple's East Prostasis. This consisted of eight or nine marble blocks depicting 63 figures, 12 gods, 10 heroes, 9 officiants, and 32 female figures. Two groups of women moved to the center from the two opposite ends of the frieze, some held fiale and wine pitchers, for libations, as well as a thymiaturian needed for sacrifices. Some women held nothing and these are the Ergastini. Two groups of men were depicted behind the women's groups. According to one interpretation, these were the ten heroes who gave their names to the ten tribes of Athens created by Clisthenes in the 6th century BC. The twelve gods were seated and divided into two groups. In the left group Hermes, Dionysus, Demeter, Ares, Iris, Hera, and Zeus sitting on a luxurious throne were depicted. The second group includes the honored goddess Athena, Hephaestus, Poseidon, Apollo, Artemis, and Aphrodite with her son Eros. The culmination of the procession was represented at the center of the frieze with the delivery of the sacred peplos from a young, possibly female figure, to a man, possibly the Lord King. The Symbolism of the Frieze the frieze depictions are both religious and political in nature, connecting the world of people and gods in a masterful way through unique sculptures, and the history of the city and its religious traditions with its imposing and unquestionable presence. Theories, concerning the interpretation of the representations on the different sides of the frieze, have been developed by the Parthenon archaeologist researchers and although they differ, present conflicting versions. Their presentations are of particular interest as they further emphasize the supreme artistic value of the sculptures and the unique inspiration of Phidias in the conception and execution of the frieze theme. They have been created in such a way, as to leave room for creative interpretation by Parthenon researchers over many centuries. This illustrates that the sculptural art of Phidias is at the same time both abstract and specific, as the great works of art always are. 
Various researches suggest that the ten groups of equestrians and the ten chariot groups on the south side represent the ten tribes of Clisthenes, i.e. the social structure of the Pericles era. The North Frieze symbolizes the archaic organization of citizens into four tribes and twelve clans. In another view, offered by the English archaeologist John Boardman, the 192 equestrians of the Frieze symbolize the heroic fallen Athenians in the Battle of Marathon, in the presence of gods and heroes. According to Boardman, the procession of horsemen is heroic, as the horses in Greek art usually affirm the presence of heroes. Boardman's theory excludes the charioteers yet it is known that the charioteers made the same contribution to the victory as the Apovites, so they too received a prize. The division of the procession into two marches that meet on the east side has been interpreted in several ways. The American archaeologist Jane Ellen Harrison argues that the Panathenaic procession is depicted in three different eras, namely, the west side represents the mythical age, the north the archaic era, and the south the classic era. The number 10 that dominates the south side, 60 riders in 10 groups of 6, 10 chariots, 10 oxen with their companions, refers to the 10 tribes into which the Clisthenes divided the Athenians. In contrast, the north side is dominated by the number 4 and its multiples, as the four tribes of the archaic era are symbolized. Similar is the view expressed by the German archaeologist Simon, who also supported the theory of different eras of the procession on each side. Some researchers, including the Greek archaeologist Chrysala Cardara, believe that the frieze includes mythological representations referring to the early establishment of the Panathenaic celebration by Erechtheus surrounded by mythical figures of Athens, Kirkops, Gaia, kings, heroes. In this point of view, the horse and chariot races symbolize the mythical horse racing of the Panathenaic celebration and go back to the very beginning of their founding. During the years 1801 to 1805 AD, Elgin removed 41% of the preserved sculptural decoration of the temple including 50 meters of the preserved frieze of Parthenon. These blocks are exposed at the Devine Gallery of the British Museum as a part of the museum's collection known as the Parthenon Marbles or the Parthenon Sculptures. The remaining 80 meters of the preserved frieze are in the Acropolis Museum. Today there is a dispute between the Hellenic Republic and the United Kingdom, regarding the legality of the possession of the Parthenon sculptures by the museum. Greece has formally requested the return of these sculptures and their repatriation in the place of their birth. 